Here we have a pre-owned 2012 Mercedes-Benz E350 4MATIC. This one comes in diamond white metallic. And then I believe it's called Almond. That's what we have for the leather interior. The powertrain consists of a 302 horsepower naturally aspirated V6 engine. Made it to a seven speed automatic transmission. And this has, I think 89,000 and some change in terms of mileage. But as we come around to the front end here, we have the halogen headlamps. But even for a 2012, I love the front end here. We have those LED lights down below there. Pretty much running lights. They don't do much, but they look good at night. But I mean, this one's in pretty good shape where it is that tri-coat paint. You do have a few scuffs throughout where that's come undone. But I mean, for, again, for the most part, especially in white, it's kind of hard to see unless it's big time damage those few scuffs but here we have 17 inch aluminum wheels and these have been curved a little bit but easy fix for the most part and then over here to the driver door panel i love that wood grain look there the harman kardon sound system sounds great i just tested it out and then we have power door lock controls here power seat controls here three functions for memory seat for the driver and front passenger and you can set that by hitting the m holding the number you want to set it to and then you can just recall by holding any of those numbers now power mirror controls are here you can pick a side and then adjust using the dial in the middle and then we have one touch automatic up and down windows and all four doors rear window lock there trunk release here pretty good size storage pocket there and then for the electronic, or not the electronic, but for the manual parking brake, you can push the pedal to get it going and then pull this to release it. Sorry, that siren kind of threw me off. But headlamp controls are here. You can adjust all of that there. And then we do have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And there's the latch for that. And then four-way power lumbar support control right there. And then we do have a little storage pocket right in there. But I have that seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3 with longer legs. So we're gonna take a quick look at the rear seat room. I'm gonna try and squeeze in here. And actually leg room is not that bad. What's really taking up the space is just how I guess cumbersome the seat is very wide and very far back i could probably scoot it up a little bit to fit somebody back here but seat back pockets on both sides 12 volts little ashtray here rear ac vents and then our middle seat folds down and then storage is here cup holders are there We're kind of an awkward position there what's neat is you do have a netted pocket here if you want to keep like a i don't know a sheet of paper that's important maybe the title or something i mean i wouldn't do that but just a couple of sheets of paper that might be important to you you can keep hidden there and then your reading lights are right here that's pretty neat grab handle and i love how they did this hook you could probably hang one or two plastic hangers on there and then several metal hanger hooks and then i do have the rear shade up now that's still in great working order that actually surprised me because most cars this age when i test that out they're either creaking or doing something wild but as we come around to the back end here we do get led tail lights and i just like the overall stance of that for it to be a 2012 especially it just looks great But there is the trunk space and it is a nice wide area because you don't have pockets on the side or anything, but you do have a netted side pocket if you want to squeeze some stuff in there. This one has a first aid kit among other things, 12 volt back there and another netted pocket. You can pull that up or you can pull it down to get back here or whatever. And then underneath this, we do have the spare it's hidden way back in there. So you can see it there. I don't want to undo all this, but there's a spare tire underneath there. And then to pull your rear seats down, 
just hit that latch there and you can see how much it'll how much space you'll get from doing that let's go ahead and check that out firsthand fuel cap there just pull that down folds flat you can run longer objects through top tethers there and then your anchors are right down underneath there and then to the front passenger seat again four-way power lumbar support storage compartment memory seat function the power seat functions all that there I mean, even the, the headrest is still power, which is great. Then we have a pocket here, lockable glove compartment here. Owner's manuals are still in this one. And that's a pretty hefty book. And then I think I forgot to hit the latch. I always forget to hit the latch on these to pop the hood. So we're gonna do that and take a look at what's underneath it. Mostly because it's always back under here hidden. Okay, so pop that latch is right here. And there's that 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. That hurt my hand. But let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. Take a quick look at the infotainment system and all that. So one of my favorite things about this E350 in particular is the wood grain throughout, but especially on the steering wheel, it just looks so exquisite. I love that about this car. And then having the leather on the sides is nice as well. But over here to the screen here, I have the navigation up, hazards are there. Now this is a 2012, so we don't have a touch screen. Everything has to be done from here or here. So I can go through the knob, kind of like zoom in and out on the screen, use this back button here, all of that. But if I want to go to, let's say, another screen, I have to hit radio. And then another thing I don't like is the volume. You have to literally turn it down slowly. You can't just, like, turn it down really quickly. It ain't going to do nothing. You got to go. And then slowly turn it all the way down. Or you can just turn the whole system off here. And then you have a mute button here. So it's nice you have all of that. But within here, I can use this knob and go through audio sources, AM, FM, XM, even have Bluetooth audio on this and an aux input. So it has everything you need, including a CD player for those that don't like that all your new cars don't have that. So phone is there, video, all of your system settings are in here. So you can change the time, language, etc. And then you do have video settings in there. Might've just broken the thing, but anyways, you can go through your six CD changer here and then telephone. And again, everything has a shortcut, including the Bluetooth. So just love how it's set up. And then this is actually radio station presets when you're just in your normal mode. And then you have that rear window shade button there. I just love the sound as well. So I'm gonna pull that down. And while I'm up here, I'm gonna pull that shade for the sunroof but just a, a neat neat system here for it to be a, a dated system in today's times but we have three stage heated seats for the front I don't know what that sound it might be the AC but Let's see if I get the backup camera up there's the backup camera there and again for it to be a 2012 it's a pretty good picture and down here we have the dual zone climate controls we do have a one stage auto mode here and where you can see this car kind of aging is these little cheap i guess plastic pieces are coming up but i mean once it's up the buttons still work themselves it just doesn't look as nice but don't really care and then your mode i like that you can kind of go through where the airflow is coming from there and then your defrosters right there you can turn the whole system off if you want to so it's a it doesn't take up a lot of space, but it does everything you need it to. So I like that. It's very minimalist in my opinion. Now that's just a little 
getting caught on something where that's aging there. So you kind of have to pull it to get it back. But we do have the bottle holders here. I think it's where the, uh, I think that right there is the ashtray for up here. But we have a 12 volt bottle holders. And then here we can change this from the eco to sport mode. And then again, there's that knob there. Pull up here to get to the center console cubby space. You have a USB, so if you wanna hook up your iPod or whatever, you can do that. And there's the aux there. And then another actual USB-A port, so that's pretty neat. Up here, reading lights. There's one touch for the sunroof. Goes all the way back. Same thing to close it. And for the shifter, pull down for drive, tap up for neutral, pull all the way up for reverse, press P for park. Paddle shifters are behind the steering wheel. Cruise control's right there. And then windshield wiper controls are right here. So your intermittent mode's here. Then you have low, high, and then off right there. And then just push that in to get that front wiper fluid. There are those blinkers. Now on the steering wheel itself, you can go through the center console, or not the center console, the center stack here in the gauge cluster just by going up and down here and then go through actual sub menus, scrolling that way. So all that's there back buttons here there's a horn voice recognition mute button here volume bluetooth buttons are here and then if you want to change your units how do you do that i forgot already mercedes is a little different But you could just go in here, settings, and then change your speed from miles to kilometers. And you can do all of that within there. So it's it's different than what I'm used to in most vehicles, but you can find it for whatever reason you do want to change your speed settings. And there's the key there in the ignition. But next, again, this has what, 80, 89,804 miles. Let's go ahead and see how this E350 formatic does when we take it out on the road for a quick test drive. So starting the test drive in this E350, I like, I'm gonna get a, try and get a better angle here. I like how, how quick the V6 is, but it's also so quiet. This just feels like a cheaper Rolls Royce. Like you behind the wheel of a Rolls Royce, even though you have a, a, a 12 cylinder engine that's turbocharged and all of that, you still have a nice quiet sound coming from the engine bay, a nice refined sound, let me put it that way. And in the sport mode here, it that's just what it feels like. And it's just, it's impressive because this is something you can get now for fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars. Very nice. Now I'm gonna put my foot in it and use the paddle shifters. We're gonna see what it does. Oh man, it's it's actually quick. That's just. Oh, that's great. Very, very impressive. So to take it out of that sports ship mode, just hold the plus paddle over here, and then we're gonna put it into the eco mode right here. But I mean, the ride is fantastic. It's very, very smooth coming down the highway here. And it's just, I'm at 2000 RPMs. So having that seven speed automatic, it just, especially for highway mileage, you can get some pretty good fuel economy out of this thing if you want to. Just a very, very impressive overall vehicle, just from a driving perspective. And again, with 89,000 miles on this, this seems to be working good. The AC's blowing cold. Everything is just working as it should. Blind spot monitors are doing their thing. I'm just extremely impressed with this car.
and it just it rides so well and if you can probably find one cheaper than this with a few more miles on it one of the good things about this is this isn't a a turbocharged older mercedes-benz engine these newer ones especially that have the naturally aspirated v6 they may not be as reliable as maybe a toyota but they're also cheaper to fix than a turbocharged engine from another manufacturer because that's just one less thing you have to worry about and i'm just impressed overall with the the power this thing has with a naturally aspirated v6 and the seven speed automatic is a just a great shifting transmission now i feel like in 2012 a good competitor for the e-class was probably like a, a lexus gs maybe like a cadillac cts but i mean this is just i'm sure this was more expensive than both of those options when it first came out and it's just nice to know that you can get one of these that cheap and it still has a lot of life left in it i mean i would definitely i always recommend getting a good mechanic when you buy a used vehicle especially with miles getting close to a hundred thousand even less than that you know so if something were to go wrong which anything could go wrong with any vehicle at any time you know you have somebody that's there to help you out and not try and take an arm and a leg to fix something that doesn't need that much work but I mean, just driving this down the road, super quiet in here. I'm hearing a little rattle, I think, from my license plate in the windshield. But other than that, I'm just impressed I'm not hearing any creaks or anything as I'm sitting here driving this. Just very impressive. And again, if road noise or road noise were to be a problem, it wouldn't be that big of a problem. I meant to say road noise or wind noise, excuse me. But if it were to be, you have the Harman Kardon sound system, which does a fantastic job at just getting that audio in your face, but making it clear, making it feel like it's more of a surround sound feel as opposed to just a bad sound. I'm just, I'm really impressed with this car. I really am. And I mean, just how it keeps the revs down with the seven speed you can expect fantastic fuel economy if you do a lot of cruising in this thing. But all in all, a very impressive car. Reliability wise, I do my research, but just first impressions, this is very, very impressive. Well, this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2012 Mercedes-Benz E350 4Matic.